Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Judah Praise. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in Him. So glad you decided to click on the link via Blog Talk Radio, via YouTube, and hopefully one day we can get it around to TikTok. And, of course, they do not have a way to upload these episodes in its entirety. So right now uh, we have to stream it through YouTube and Blog Talk Radio and, of course, just share it on Instagram. But the Lord is so good. We give him the praise, the honor, and the glory for his mercy endures forever, for another day of life, another day of purpose, Another day to walk in the confidence of Yahweh. And that's what we want to talk about today. Confidence in Yahweh, our power. Because confidence doesn't come from anywhere else other than the Most High. There's a lot of things that we have to do for the most high. We pray the Lord bless this message and uh, let it bring edification and uh, encourage the hearts of his people today. In Yahweh's name, amen. But confidence cannot come from any place else but the most high in anything that we do. And We all need confidence to do the work of the Lord, to do what he called us to do. We need confidence in the normal routines of life, taking care of your business, uh, running your business, on your job. In every capacity of life, we need confidence. But today we want to kind of narrow the confidence, uh, the description of the confidence that I want to talk about today is confidence in the Most High, Yahweh. Because every day as Hebrew Israelites, we need the power of Yahweh especially in these day and times that we're living in when there there's a lot of uh, oppression that we face on a daily basis in the land of our captivity. We face a lot of uh, oppression, and that's just a matter of fact. Um because we're dealing with the pressure of life through our enemies that are against us. And so while we're having to be strong in the Lord and in the power, Scripture tells us that, of his might, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So that means that it's like when the Most High told uh, Joshua, Caleb, Moses, all of the patriarchs, they had to be strong. They had to be very strong in the Lord in order to accomplish what he wanted them to accomplish. And we know included in that confidence is faith, you know, because... Faith without works is dead. In order for us to have faith and get it done and have confidence, we know we have to have the works of the Lord abiding in us. So I want to really look at some scriptures because in anything that we do, we have to have confidence, as I said before. Psalms 118 and 8 says, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Better 
even though the Most High, he gives us people in our lives. He gives us companionship, family, children, mother, father, friends, just people that we feel that we can trust people that we feel close to, people that we love. Um, Because the Most High said in his word that he put the solitude in families. So that means the lonely, he gives them family. So there's always somebody to, uh, you can pretty much rely on to be that confidant uh, in his respective place, but this scripture is telling us there's a boundary, there's a limitation. You know, again, Psalms 118 and 8, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. That means that we can't put all of our confidence in human beings. Because first, cause first of all, they have, every human being have their own lives. At the end of the day, we all are individuals. Yes, mom can, you know, uh, rely upon her children in old age to be there for them, for her, and the father as well. That's just the normality of life. That's the way it's supposed to go. But it may not go that way depending on what type of life that that child has or where that child is located or is that child healthy enough to do these things or Vice versa, of course, we talk about a marriage, a husband or a wife. Are they able to take care of that spouse if they're sick or whatever? Is the spouse, you know, or have the capacity to do that? Or let's just, you know, any situation where we have to rely upon another human being. This is what the scripture is saying. That is better to trust the Lord, like all of our hope and all of our trust need to be in the Lord, than to put confidence, like, oh, I know they're going to do this to me. I know that they're going to, you know, because uh, situations change. People change. But one thing we know that the most high doesn't change. He will make sure whatever needs to be done in our lives will be done and will be accomplished because man will fail you in some type of way. Sometimes it's not intentional. They have all of the the right attitudes, their heart is in the right place. But it's all about the, the the human, uh, let's just say, I don't, I want to use the right word, frame, the frame of a human being. As David said, that he knows my frame. So I can promise a lot of things to a lot of people. I'm going to be there tomorrow. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do, do, to do that, to help you with that. Excuse me. But, Well, the scripture tells us, do not say that we'll do this, that, or the other tomorrow. Say not that, because we don't know what tomorrow holds. So if I tell an individual, I'm going to come, I'm going to pick you up, I'm going to take you to do the things you need to do, and you don't have to worry about nothing, I'm going to be here for you. My heart is there. I'm going to be there for you. But then... The next morning, something happens in my life that prevents me. I may get a flat tire. Anything can happen. I don't want to put stuff out there, but anything can happen because the Most High can create something to happen. Even to just teach us a lesson to say, if the Lord's will, I will be there. Because all of our help comes from the Lord. And there are many lessons that the Most High teaches and things that he does in our lives on a wide spectrum, a broad spectrum. 
It could it could be lessons for the individual, lessons for ourselves. The Most High is taking us through various trials, tribulations, uh, lessons that we have to say if the Lord's will, because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Who can look into the future? There could be a scheduled game. There could be a scheduled meeting. There could be a scheduled conference. Everybody's looking forward to it. Everybody have already laid out their clothes. Everybody has already made preparation. But the Lord said we don't know what tomorrow holds. To say if the Lord's will because he is the author and the finish of our faith, and he is the one that guides our lives. The Bible says, "Is many plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord that established his going. So how can we know our own ways when it is the Lord that established our going? So we have to see if the Lord's will to go through that scripture, hopefully before I can get off the broadcast. just want to touch on that a little bit. Psalm 73, verse 26 says, my flesh and my heart family, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So when we go on through trials and tribulations and um. We're having to uh, trust in the Lord when these things come upon us. That's our confidence. Even during this broadcast, the confidence is of the Lord. Yahweh is our power. Our confidence in Yahweh is our power because we have the spirit. We have the spirit of the Lord. So we don't want to talk about too much of natural confidence because, you know, everybody have a little, so, uh, excuse me, a little low self-esteem here or there in their lives. So we don't want to talk about that too much. We want to rely upon the power of the power and the spirit, the Holy Spirit that quicken us things in life that tries to come and overthrow us. But when your power comes from your power, the most high. You know you have a solid power. Your 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 confidence is not vain. Your trust is not vain because the most high is your strength. That's every day. We rely upon the most high because um he's the one that's gonna order our steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in him. All of our help comes from the Most High. Let's look at another scripture here in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. The man who trusts in the Lord, confident indeed is in the Lord, is blessed. That means when we wake up in the morning and we put our minds upon the Most High, he knows who we are. As scripture says, the Lord knows those that belong to him, period. He knows those that belong to him. So as the scripture says again, Jeremiah 17, 7, the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is indeed, whose confidence indeed is in the Lord, is blessed. Right? Most high, I know I can't do nothing without you. And that is what the enemies, the oppressors of our nation don't understand. They don't understand that all of our help comes from the Lord, that we are relying totally upon the Most High to be our guide. See, I don't know uh, the level of confidence other individuals or people have trust, their trust in the most high, how they view 
the Most High. When you read the Bible, there's an expectation of how you receive the Most High in your life. You know, there's a power that is received from the Word, through the Spirit, of how you receive the Most High in your life. And that's according to every individual faith. And that's why it's important to take this journey very serious with the Most High and make sure that you have a really real relationship with him because that is going to prove how much confidence and the power that you receive from that. He has to be very real to you. It's like not, you're just not living out here without the real power, the source. He's the source of our power because he is our power. Yahweh, the most high. So that's why we're blessed. The scripture says here in Jeremiah 17 and 7 that we are blessed because we trust in the Lord who's our confidence. So no one can get around that. Now we look here in Psalm chapter 71, verse 4 through 5. It says here, deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. Let's stop right there because we know this world is evil. I was thinking the other day as I was raising my children, I was so busy and pretty much entranced with just having responsibilities for so many years, um, I didn't really, I didn't really give that much attention to the evil that was out here. I dealt with whatever I had to dealt with, and I was just on to the next. You know, with so much responsibility in raising, you know, um, eight children, and they have time to just. Um, <laughs> focus on a lot of things that was around me. I just stayed in a lot of prayer, of course, with that many children, just always being very spiritual as much as I can and, you know, enjoying my family, uh, of course, at that time being in church, just engulfed in the spirit. as much. And then, you know, at home was more of my prayer time. Um, my relationship was really developed at home home with the Most High, not so much as going to church. I did as time grew, of course, that's the only, you know, um, alternative we had as Hebrew Israelites during the time before we came into our understanding of who we are was the church. But I'm getting to the point that I wasn't too much aware of so much of the, the, the evil until all of my children were grown. The Most High took me to another level in the spirit to show me uh, and understand the evil that was here. Now, I had a sense and a discernment of the evil because I would pray so much and I would give my children so much wisdom because I knew that something could happen out there in this bad world. I knew that. And... um, I would just always be so prayerful. And then I, I, I was aware of the evil to the point that I just, in I think it was 2014, had to really pray that the Most High give me um, wisdom and help me to release my family to him. It was one of the hardest things in the world, you know. It's like I was just like, oh, holding on. And the kids were getting grown and. I was still in that mode of them being children, um, but uh, because I knew that they were, they were, there was a, a evil out here. But in recent years, the Most High have really showed me the evil that's out here, and that is when we walk wisely with the Lord and in His confidence. Because the uh, the evil is people minds because they don't have the most high. They don't have the Lord in their mind. They don't know 
of the Spirit of the Lord. They have not surrendered and subjected themselves to the power of the Most High. That's why you have atheists and different type of religions. And fear the Lord. That's why the news is full up with atrocities every day. Because there are people that just do not know the Lord in that fashion of his power. The fellowship of his suffering and in the power of his resurrection, they do not know him. So when it's like that, we have to be careful. You know, the Israelites, were always a separate people. That's why the Lord called them holy and peculiar. We are different from the world. We're in the world, but we are not a part of the world. See, when the Israelites of our patriarchs were journeying, so journeying through the wilderness or, you know, even all through the, the Bible, they were together as a nation. Other nations were looking at them. But see, being taught in the church, and I say this all the time, I don't, I'm not here to bash the church. I'm not going to do that because if we didn't have the church, you know, where would we have placed our faith as people Israelites during that time? We got thousands of, of saints, Hebrew Israelites that are still in the church. I'm, I just pray for them that the Most High enlighten them to the truth because if we didn't have the church, you know, we wouldn't have no, we don't know, we probably would have been in the world, in the world. So we have to give an honor what honor is due and just thank the Most High for every place in our lives that he kept us while we were in darkness. But I, I, I said that, I had to throw that in there because we've always been a separate people from the world. We've always been separate, and that is, that, is, that is what's so important, to be separate from the world, to be separate from these other nations. They do not have the same spirit that we have. If we, if we are Israelites, just like in the Bible, there's a scripture where he said he put a difference between the Ethiopians and Israel. And I probably can get to that scripture too, but I want to stay on track here. There's a difference that he put between us and the world. Like a leopard spotted. That's what it says. Spotted leopard. If they, we are different from any other nation. Israel was different. We are different. Throughout scriptures, we always have been different. We're peculiar people because the spirit that the Most High put in us is peculiar, is different. They always, you know, people like to just... Um, make mockery of the black church and how we praise the Lord during those times or you know but we have a relationship with the most high that like no other nation. Granted if the most high give the spirit uh to a nation that's cleaving to us, you know, they still don't have it like we have it. We born with the spirit. We born with the power. We're born with that confidence in the Most High. And he gave us his word to continue in that power, in that confidence in him. That's why we seek him for what we need, where we need to go, to guide us, to lead us. He said, I'm with you wherever you go. But he knows if we are constantly walking in him or he knows if we have gotten off track or we've gotten in the world, you know. He knows if we have abandoned our faith. The Most High knows these things. So he wants our confidence to be strong in him. We, we need that in these especially in these days that we're living in, where the enemy is turning up his heat and the enemy 
is trying to oppress our nation more and more. You're dealing with demonic forces. You're dealing with principalities, powers, wickedness in high places. How are we going to deal with these spirits in our own self-will? We deal with these spirits by the spirit of the Most High, casting down these strongholds. That's why he said we don't fight against flesh and blood. It may seem like it, but we don't. That's why physical altercation is so redundant. Physical altercation is redundant because our warfare is in the spirit. It's not with flesh and blood. It's in the spirit that we wage war against it in the spirit. Now, you may encounter a person that's full of the devil or full of these evil spirits, then they want to continue with you. But the battle is still in the spirit, so we have to be careful, even if you have to rebuke it. Let's read it again, Psalm 71, 45. Deliver, deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. That's what we're talking about. The grasp of those that are evil and cruel, those that are trying to hold you back, those that have nothing good to say, those that, you know, mock you if they see something uh, in your life. They, they see the, something, you know, maybe your trial, your tribulation, they're evil and they're cruel men. We want the Lord to deliver us from these type of evil spirits. The latter part of that verse says, For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence is my youth. All the years in life, all of your life you've been serving the Lord, he's been the confidence since our youth. I can say that for myself. I mean, I have known a lot, but at the age of 17, 15, well, let's just say like, you know, I remember as far back as I was 13, probably 12, getting up every morning praying, praying getting my confidence from the most high. So we he's been our confidence since our youth. It's in us to serve the most high. It's in us to serve the most high. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26 says, In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence, and his children will have a refuge. This is a key pivotal scripture right here about confidence in how we need our power. Because it's in the fear of the Lord. Because when we fear the Lord, we have wisdom. It's not going to go do anything, say anything, be anything. You fight the good fight of faith to lay hold of eternal life. And strive for the masteries in that perfection. In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence. Yeah, because when you feel the Lord, you know the Most High is going to come through for you. You know the Most High is going to open the doors. He's going to heal you, deliver you, whatever you need from him. He's going to be there for you. And his children will have a refuge, safety, safety, because your spirit is putting out what is needful in the spirit for them to survive, be strong, correct them, bring chastisement. Your spirit is pouring all out, and though they may fall, but they ain't going to stay there. They may stumble, but the most has got them. doesn't matter what nobody else says. The most high is able that's why he says in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. This is the God of our consolation. The Most High is our consolation. 
He's our hope. And he missed that scripture. It was Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. He said, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. This is beautiful. Now, let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Let's turn on the Bible now. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3 because these scriptures help us to understand just how weak or frail our, our flesh is and that we shouldn't put no confidence in our flesh. Corinthians chapter 3, let's look at verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit. Mm-hmm. The circumcision of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Which worship, excuse me, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Now we rejoice in Christ Jesus. We know that's the name that we always call upon. His real name is Yahweh Shai. So we rejoice in him. And put no confidence in the flesh. Because the the flesh will fail us. The flesh will fail us. The Most High wants us to trust in him with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all of our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. It's a surrendering. I think about that verse all the time. That's Proverbs 3. Uh, five through six. I want to. I want to say one thing. Um, think about my grandmother a lot. I think about my grandmother a lot because raising up and going to see my grandmother, I used to see her in the same spot, in the same posture. Let me say that the same. Posture. All my life, all my life, I had to see my grandmother in the same posture, and she never changed as far as her temperament. Her spirit was always the same. Now, of course, during that time, I think my grandmother probably was like in her uh, maybe seventies middle to early 80s, and I had to go stay with her when I was uh, pregnant with my first child. And I got a really close relationship with her during that time, but she was always the same. And you could hear her playing her spirituals, um, you know, she just had a television on, but then sometimes she would just play the spirituals, and she just used to just the same postures, and she used to give great wisdom, great wisdom. So when I think about that, and I think about the confidence and the trust that we need to have in the Lord. I think about how my grandmother just always just trusted the Lord. She had 13 children, raised them. Her and her husband had 13 children together. And, you know, they all lived a good life, you know, here or there, one or two may have gone out there to pray or whatever, but my grandmother just always was just in that same posture. Spiritually, spiritually. And I I was trying to tell some people on another podcast that I have, I never saw my grandmother in pain. Never. 20, 30 years. The 30 years that, of course, I got to really know her as, you know, 
I became a teenager, never saw her in pants. And every time I see her, she will just be sitting with her dress. And she was very, very strong. And it, it just taught me something in life. At this age I am now, it has taught me something. And so she had this confidence in the Lord. Like she was immovable. Very, very strong. Very strong. Mm-hmm. So let's read Philippians chapter 3 again because it's talking about the confidence in the Lord and not our flesh. Verse 4 says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Of course, you know, this is Paul giving his pedigree and running it down. Now, Paul's giving his pedigree here, all in Olympians here, we're boasting going on here, but he's also balancing it with letting us know how we ought not put confidence in the flesh. But as the scripture says, we make our boast in the Lord. Paul said that, we make our boast in the Lord. Because we are apprehended of Christ. You look in verse 12. We are apprehended of, of, uh, of Christ. Verse 13 says it as well. Philippians 3, let's look at verse 13. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehend, but this one thing I do, forget those, those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. Let's go up to verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after is that I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of in Christ your house. Being apprehended of the most high means that we are just apprehended of. That's just the bottom line, like captured. Um, we're in him. be apprehended to um, embrace the most high. Mm-hmm. Let's look at another scripture. We're talking about confidence in Yahweh, who is our power. If you just not tuning in, I'm going to stream this broadcast once it's completed and uploaded to YouTube. And um, I'm going to try to, of course, stream it on um, Blast Talk Radio and some other platforms. Uh, I remember I, I was able to do that <clears throat> years ago for 10 years, stream it in different parts of the, the uh, platform. So let's go to another verse. It says here, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 6 through 8, therefore we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. Yeah, in his body. For we live by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. You ever felt that way sometimes? You desire your you desire your life to be with the Lord, but like as Paul said, you know you have family here. It's needful for me to be here because you know sometimes you feel like you want to be with the Lord because you can feel all that beautiful of the glory of the Most High, the Spirit. I mean, who would want to be with the Lord? Why wouldn't you want to be with the Lord? But it's more needful for us to be here because we still have work to do. We still have souls to save. Our families still need us here. Uh, There's so much work to do. You know, and that's the, you know, the decision Paul had to go back and forth because he needed to, to know that it was more needful for him to be here than 
to go with the Lord, even though our spirit wanted to be with the Lord. Let's read it again. He said, therefore, we are always confident to know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. But he's still with us here in the earth, though, for we live by faith. Yeah. We, we, we feel the most high. We hear him. We walk by faith and not by sight. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. That's always there. Now, you talk about confidence. You talk about faith. Faith and confidence goes hand in hand. If you look at the book of Hebrews, Let's look at the book of Hebrews. And that's what I wanted to get to. I had a very important scripture to bring out there as well. Because the the patriarchs, the patriarchs, they all had the 11th chapter, the hall of faith, the saints of the hall of faith. They all had confidence. They all had faith. They all... Um, were illuminated by the power of the Most High. Let's see. Now, now faith, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, now faith is the substance. Now, if you want to break that word down and translate it a little bit better to where people can understand it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That substance is confidence. Confidence in what you are believing. Confidence in what you are sure of. Confidence because the Most High said it. The Most High spoke it. The Hawah who is our power, has given us this confidence, has given us this substance of faith to know of surety that what he says, it will stand. Because why do you need faith? You need faith to believe beyond what you see. That's why we need faith. We need faith to believe beyond what we see, what we feel, uh, what we don't see. So faith is that substance of confidence. See, that confidence is the substance that you got to have in the most high and what you are sure about the hope for, for that assurance about what you do not see. You have to have that assurance. You have confidence in the most high that he gives you that assurance for what you're believing for, what you're having faith for. You may not see it, but when you have confidence in the most high, if the most high has spoken a word in your life, then that is what he will do. So that is powerful there. We talk about faith. Then as you go on, the author of Hebrews began to give you the faith of the patriarchs. Uh, the experience with the Most High and how they had faith is just, uh, you just read this chapter of the Hall of Faith. You know, you have a Hall of Fame here in, in this land. Well, the scriptures have Hall of Faith. Those that were inducted into the Hall of Faith believe in the Most High regardless of what they see. So let's look at a scripture here. Let's go, let's skip over to um, Hebrews 11. I want to I want to start at verse um, verse 32. And what shall I say, excuse me, and what shall 
I more say, for the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophet, verse 33 now, who through faith subdued kingdom, walked righteousness, obtained promises, Stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, wax valiant, in fight, turn to flight the armies of the alien. 35, women received their dead, raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting the deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockers, mockings, and scourgings. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. All these having obtained a good report through faith, Receive not the promise, but having provided some better things for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Basically, they went through all of this that are here today, living in faith through Yahweh Shai, prepared the way for us to have this. Belief, walk of faith. You know, beginning with Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of the patriarchs on down, David. So many, you know, we just read Gideon, Gideon, a lot of the prophets believed, believed by faith, had their confidence in Yahweh who was their power, went through all of everything I just read because their confidence and trust was in the Lord. And they did not uh, consider this life the end of their life, that it didn't even matter. This life didn't even matter anymore because they knew that they had a better home, a better place. That's why they said, of whom, in verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. The world is not worthy of some of us. It's not worthy of the Israelites. It's not worthy. It's not worthy of us. Because there, there, there's evil. There's so much hate, so much sin, greed, and lust, and murderous thoughts, this evil in the land we are around all of these heathens. The world is not worthy of us because we have the spirit of the Lord. All we want to do is that's why, you know, we make it in the kingdom. We're just going to praise and worship the Lord, bow down like the 24 elders. They just worship the Lord night and day. That's all you want to do. And the world is not worthy of us because we're not able to do that 24 hours a day right now. Because we have interruptions of these powers, the principalities, that are against us, that when we walk out our door, we go places, even in our finances, even in taking care of our business out there, we have to contend with these evil spirits. Even in your own home sometimes. 
dealing with situations that you got to manage. But we can think the most high that our confidence is strong in him that we press through and we get those beautiful moments with the Lord. We're in a fight. We're in a battle in this, in this, in this life, in this walk of faith. There are many that's cleaving to the house of Jacob. Yeah, I believe they're suffering. They're going through too because they're hated because they won't hate us. They're striving with all within them not to hate the most high chosen people. So they're under attack as well. That's a fact. Those that are cleaving to the house of Jacob, can you hear me? Oh, they're going through too. So we're going to get another scripture here. Bear with me for a moment. Just a moment. Hang in there. Just bear with me. Thank you. Thank you for that. So we are talking about the confidence, our confidence in the Lord. And how? We got power. Very important here. Yeah, we have to have confidence to pray. That's another thing. We have to have confidence to pray. You have to have confidence to live a godly life. You know, you have to strive for the masteries, you know. Oof. But as I just read in Hebrews right here, chapter 11, our forefathers and the patriarchs had a lot of confidence. They had a lot of faith. And at different times in our lives, at different uh, stages in our lives, it demands us to put our trust in the Lord more and more. You know, um, we have to be unmovable in this truth. We have to be unmovable in this truth. Now, there's a, a scripture, um, I always love to go to this scripture. Um, it's in Isaiah. It, talk, it talks about having a confidence in the Lord and not trusting in yourself. In quietness, I go to it here. In quietness and confidence, that's important. Important. Excuse me, um, my language was a little twisted. I still had some old dental work, so yeah, bear with me here. I want to get this scripture because this is very important. Okay, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. This is very important because this will keep a lot of stress off of you. This scripture right here will help you to rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord and trust in him. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest. Returning and rest, that's very key here. You shall be saved. In returning from your old ways, in returning from confidence in your own flesh, in returning, returning from whatever you are trusting yourself in. Just return from that. Return from worrying. Returning. In returning and rest shall you shall shall you be saved. In returning and rest shall you be saved. Ye be saved. In quietness and in Confidence, 
quietness, that means we are going to have to uh, readjust our schedule and get some quiet time. I mean, this is just how I look at it, understand this scripture. In quietness, And in confidence, your confidence in the most high shall be your strength. You're only going to have that kind of confidence when you totally trust the most high. Quiet, settle your soul down. I mean, it's so much can happen throughout the day. I understand that. Responsibilities. But, I mean, just really, really. Quieting your soul and putting your confidence in the most high is going to be your strength. Why? Because you can hear him. Place solitude with the most high. You can read your Bible. You can pray and meditate. Scripture says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You could pray and talk to the Lord on the inside. That's a power that you have on the inside. It's a real power on the inside when you can talk and meditate on meditate. Meditate on the word on the spirit. But the latter part of this verse says, again, we're going to read it again. Let's start from the beginning and then we'll get to the latter part. You're just now tuning in, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest. See, I want to, we got to stop right here for a second. Because when they talk about rest, you know, the children of Israel, Scripture says that they didn't enter into the promise because they didn't enter into his rest. In order for you to enter into all what the Most High has uh, decreed and declared for your life, you have to. We have to enter into His rest. Yeah, you want to receive the promise of the Most High. You have to enter into His rest. Mhm. So we start again. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall be, shall ye be saved. Part of our salvation. Just like the children of Israel, the promised land was their salvation. They was trying to make it to the promised land so they can, you know, be blessed with the, the fruit of the goodness of the land and not happen to be in the wilderness and going through. So the promised land was like their salvation for us. Ours, of course, is the salvation that the Most High have sent your house shy to bring us. You got to enter into that so we can be saved. Enter into the Most High. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And you will not. You will not. That means the Most High is saying his, some of his people would not do this. Some of them would not enter into his rest. Some of them will not quiet their souls and have confidence in him so it, it can be their strength. Some of them would not do this. And when they don't do this, they're not going to have peace. They're not going to have peace. I mean, one of the things that we have to do on a daily is to cultivate our relationship with the Lord, the Most High, enough to the children, uh, excuse me, to the point where we have the peace of the Lord abiding in us. We have to do this. Because Satan comes to steal, kill, and to destroy he want to destroy your peace. He want to destroy your soundness. He want to destroy your mind. He comes to just distract you, discourage you, that you can't even hardly get nothing done. How are you going to get something done like that? You don't have no peace. You have to be in a place of a sound mind, as Christ said. 
you know, he came to give us love, power, and a sound mind. Sound mind. You can't handle business or you can't do nothing effective for the most high. You don't have a sound mind. Granted, we all get stressed out here or there, but the most important thing you have to have is a sound mind. We only can get that if we uh, get into the quietness and have confidence in the Lord so he can be our strength. Now, there are things that we can do, set out to do, because faith without works is dead. So we have to get out there. Yes, we have to work and do this, you know, the things that we are called to do. Um, and in, in that, the most high will work through us, because faith without works is dead. He wants us to put forth that effort. But he said, and they, you would not. But they said what in verse 16? But but ye said, no, we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee. And we will ride upon swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. We're not going to go any further into this right here. Because the scripture also talks about that. You know? Um, giving warning to those that put their confidence in chariots, horses. You know, especially back in these times. There's another scripture that said, woe to those that go down to Egypt for help. Egypt is a place of bondage or, you know, you're looking for confidence and help in the wrong places. He says, uh, you know, it's another place in Scripture where the Bible, the Lord tells us that our confidence is, is of him. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Thank you all for hanging in there with me. Mm-hmm. I want to be in the in the Lord. In the power of his might. Grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the only we can do that, we have to make sure our confidence is, is, is of him. Our expectation, our confidence, our faith, everything is about the most high. You know, a lot of people think you're so religious, you're so religious. No, we're not so religious. There's no such thing as religious with us as Israel, as people of Israelites. It's because we have an internal relationship with the most high that pulls us that strengthens us, or we can hear him, hear him, excuse me. And that is why we, our nation get chastised the most, because we have been called by the most high. He chastised those he loves. You get a child out there that don't belong to the most high, you know, what person chastised somebody else's child like they chastised, chastised their own? You know, the Most High chastised those that he loved and scourged everyone that he loved because he know that there are lawless deeds out here that his, his people can get into, so he has to chastise them back into his love, back into his will, back into faith, back in because he loves us. He wants us to make it. He wants us to... He wants to see us, or he wants us to see him face to face, face to face one day. And that can't happen if we are peddling around it with lawless deeds, sinful deeds. He wants to see us one day face, to behold him. The Most High wants us to behold his glory one day. So he has chastisers. For Hebrews chapter 4, I think I said, let's look a little bit here. <clears throat> Verse 16, excuse me. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy 
and find help in time of need. Boldly. Come to the most high. Boldly. Lord, I need you. Lord, I thank you. Most high. Boldly. Boldly. With confidence. Confidence. Coming boldly to what? The throne of grace. We need the grace of the Most High to give us the understanding, the wisdom, and how to to put ourselves in Him so we can have that strength. That's what grace is. That's why He told Paul, "My grace is sufficient for you, and my strength is made perfect in weakness." He said, come boys to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. We need mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. You don't come boldly to the throne of grace, you know. You know, maybe you don't have a relationship with the Most High because he didn't say, you know, even though we fear the Lord, we have a healthy fear of the Lord, it's different from fearing to come in his presence. All the time you fear going to the Lord's presence, if, we, if you know a person know they have really been doing wrong, or perhaps they're not even none of His, because He told us to come boldly. If He's your God, He's your God, like a father, Daddy. I need you, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. That's how He wants us to come to Him. So we just got a few more verses. And then we're going to just pretty much end the broadcast. i got to get my um, other platform of followers to come here on YouTube. Um, i just be led by the spirit with social media. Uh, you have to do that. I have to use that wisdom because because of what the Most High is doing um, in my life at this moment. I have to use discernment and have wisdom. First John chapter five verse fourteen. Let's go there. We're talking about confidence. You got to build up your confidence in the Lord. The Lord doesn't want us to be weak. He doesn't want us to be afraid. Um. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to know that he's with us. He wants us to wake up in the morning with all of our trust in him that no matter what happens throughout our day, that the Most High is with us, with us like a mighty warrior. That's the kind of confidence the Most High wants us to have. That we know that he's with us like a mighty warrior. These messages like this is so important to encourage the body of Christ because everyday people face challenges. That's why, you know, on some of my platforms I have family, I have friends. You know, I'm just an enthusiastic all-around person. I've always been known like that. But I also, uh, you know, I had to put it out there, I can't always be in that mode because there is so many people suffering that we got to bring this word. We got to teach this word. We got to, you know, break the bread of life so that people can have life, that people can have hope that people can have the assurance that they need, the confidence that they need when they get up in the morning that they don't give up, that they don't lose faith, that they can believe. Because some people's lives can just turn upside down. Everything just changed for them. You know, they're going through family issues. They might have lost their job or something happened in their business. Something might have happened in their health. So we have to be there for our people, our nation, you know, and given with all of the the things of the atrocities of police brutality, the opposition that we are, you know, we're in with the battles in this healthcare system, all of the things that our nation 
we are experiencing. There are people right now because of this pandemic and all this stuff going on, they have experienced things they never experienced in their lives. So who's going to be there for them? Who's going to be their intercessor, as the Most High say? Who's going to be the intercessor? Perhaps all of the things I've been through or you've been through prepared us to be here for people that have made have not experienced what we've experienced. And he's given us that strength. I'm sure that there's people that have experienced what I have experienced. I have an experience in the body of Christ, and they are there to strengthen me. I can hear the wisdom. Oh, I guess my inspiration and confidence and strength from the spirit of the word of the Lord is being put out there by my nation as well. Because iron sharpens iron. So it's not so much as trying to be so much on social media just for that. That's why, you know, sometimes I'm so glad to be back on this side of the podcast and blog talk radio because videos and your picture and your video, yourself, 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 which is needful, of course, here or there or whenever is necessary. But faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Paul wrote letters and told the people, you know, he may be not there in present, but his words and his power is, is, is still effective. So I may not have a video out there, but the words of the spirit of the power, the presence of the Lord is still effective. Uh, a journey that we're on is a very serious journey. I don't really know what other people are doing with their social media accounts, but I, one thing I do know you know, not saying it's always been like that in my life. Of course, you want your family to see you. You share pictures, videos, or whatever. But um, this this word is so so needed. The word of the Lord in our lives every day. We got to get this chance. You know, we got to get in that flow, that flow, that flow, that flow, that flow. You may not be on one platform all the time or... You know, you may be on another one at this stage, but, you know, just stay in the flow of the Spirit. Do something for the most high. If you don't, the Spirit is going to change. You you, you have to stay busy in the Lord. He said, work while it's day, for when night comes, no man can work. Not only does it help others, you know, inspire and do, give edification for other people's lives, but even our own self will be obedient to doing what the Most High called us to do. First John chapter 5, and we want to look at um, verse 14. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. He heareth us. He hears us. That's confident. You know the Lord heard your prayers. You get up. You know the Lord heard your prayers. He heard your prayers, and he saw, and he knows that you have faith, and that's what he's going to answer you by, your faith, your confidence. So that's very important. Very important. And you want to always have that confidence in the Lord. Because people of the world, they don't have it. Um, so a lot of people are jealous of others, our nation. Um, they don't understand that that type of power that we have. You don't have to be ashamed to have, uh, to decree and declare your pedigree, your your your, your biblical Hebrew heritage. That's who we are as Israelites. Yes, it has been hidden from us. Yeah, we, we're not going to be ashamed of that. Want to, you know, now the Lord, you know, we read the Apocrypha where they weren't able to do that. And they suffer great persecution because they were not able to declare their Hebrew heritage as a Jew, the Jews of the Mokai. But we're not living in those times now. The Most High is bringing us up and out. This is the time of deliverance because he's moving swiftly. There are things that's going to happen. 
And that's why we have to have that great confidence in the Lord. Um, we know that we should not put our confidence in the world or the world riches or whatever we have that the Most High has blessed us with. And, you know, that shouldn't be a problem. You know, when the Most High blesses us, uh, we get in the place of um, a blessing. It, it's, uh, it, it, it should be a normal thing. Like nothing should change you. Nothing should move you because you know that this is of the Lord. Your spirit has been um, developed. Uh, growth have came into you to know where all your help comes from. You know? Like Psalms 139 and 14 says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. It's confident in the Lord of what he's done. This is the work of the of the Lord. As one scripture says, this is the work of the Lord. It's marvelous in our sight. Whatever the Lord do for us. The enemies of the world they don't like us to have confidence. They don't want us to have confidence. There, 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 there are limitations and boundaries to confidence. Again, uh, when it comes to families, um, you can read Michael 7 and 5, you know, it talks about relationships and the boundaries of a man with the woman and having confidence in her and things like that. So we know that the Most High give us the measure of confidence that we need to have with someone and in someone. There's a scripture that says, beware of your children in the, in the apocryphal. And again, Michael, Michael here five. I'm sorry, excuse me. Michael seven and five talks about do not trust a neighbor, put no confidence in a friend, even with the woman who lies in your embrace. Guard your words of your lips. We're talking about the husband to do this to the wife. And the apocrypha says, beware of your children. Put no confidence in man at all. It's all come from the Lord. Be grateful for your husband. Be grateful for your wife. Be grateful for your children. Be grateful for your job. Be grateful for your business. Be grateful for whatever capacity of life the Lord has allowed you or allowed people to come in your life. But at the end of the day, your confidence is in the Lord. That's why people's heart get broken because they put too much confidence in a person. You have to pray that the Most High keep that person mind and heart right. You have to pray that the Most High guide that person, your husband or your wife, heart and their lives, you know, so that he will allow them to do what they need to do according to his will for you or with you as a team, as a partner, or family member, you know, love you like they're supposed to love you. And, what you know, just the confidence in the Lord because that comes from the Lord. Because the Most High is the one that create evil and good. So he may stir up an adversary against you for a moment. He may stir up a trial or a tribulation with your loved ones against you for a moment. You're going to be so disappointed because you didn't thought this, you didn't think that. But the Lord is letting us know and teaching us lessons how not to have too much confidence in man, but to put our confidence in him because he will never fail. Confidence in Yahweh, who's our power. He's a strong tower strong city for us, and we know how to, you know, approach throne, the throne of grace with confidence, with boldness, and pray and get it out. Get it out. Talk to the Lord. Now, we want to look at a few more scriptures here. First John chapter 2, verse 3. Let's go there. Now we're going to talk about more of the spiritual thing because we're talking spiritual anyway, but 
uh, sometimes we relate confidence, of course, to just walking out the door, going to a job interview, being strong, having confidence. Uh, it's a little bit more deeper than that when you're dealing with the Bible. Because the spirit of the Lord is, is every everything to us. It's the confidence. But this is this this next verse is going to help give us a lot more confidence because when you're obedient to the Lord, you can have all the confidence in the world. For first John chapter two, let's look at verse three. Yes. You need this to be able to overcome the enemies out there. You don't have to be afraid. You can walk in that boldness and confidence. And, you know, a, a lot of, the, again, the patriarchs, the apostles, when they had to go stand before their persecutors, they had to have confidence. And the Lord said that told them not to worry about what they would say because he would give them what to say in that very hour. That's confidence in the Lord. His power is real upon the earth inside of us. But First John Chapter 2, we want to look at, um, let me make sure I got the right one. Chapter 2, and let's look at verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandment. Let's read that again. First John chapter 2, verse 3, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandment. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So we're talking about the confidence of knowing him, and how can we know him? You only know him if you keep his commandments. But whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected, whereby know we that we are in him. He that says he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So based on verse 3, hereby we do know that we know him how? That's confidence. If we keep his commandments, that's all the confidence you need right there. You're walking in the spirit. You're not getting into sin. You know him. You hear his voice tell you, don't go here. Don't do that. This is not good for you. Don't go down that road. Don't make that phone call. Go this way. Avoid this conversation. Avoid that conversation. Uh, Just different things that the Most High send the Holy Spirit to guide us, to tell us what to do and what not to do, you know, based on his perfect will for each of our lives. That's confidence that we know him like that. You don't have that confidence, and we can't say we know him like that if we remain in sin. That's why the the scripture says, you know, he that keeps singing don't know God. If a person keeps sinning, staying in sin, they don't know the Lord. They say they do, but they don't know him. Let's let's look a little bit. Let's look at that. We're going to look at that a little bit. Let's go to one one page over 1 John chapter 3. And I taught on the commandments on the the, the previous broadcast trying to get these broadcasts in close to as many days possible without, you know, long span at a time. Okay, so, you know, in lieu of responsibilities, of course. But First John chapter 3, and I want to look at, I want to get too much in, in off the subject of confidence. But I wanted to just show this part um, where the person that keeps sinning do not know God. You don't love God if you keep sinning. Let's look at verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He that 
committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this perfect purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, this basically, like, you, you, you're not going to remain in sin. If you're born of God, you're not going to keep sinning. And um, goes into my other message I taught the other day. You're not going to keep sinning if you are born of the Most High. And that's what we have to pray for, the confidence that you don't keep sinning against the Most High. You don't want to do that. We can look at If you're born of God, you keep it to yourself. And that's in uh, 1 John chapter 5, and you can look round about up in there in the 18th verse. 18th verse. He that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one touches him not. Because you're having that strong... uh, Constellation of confidence in the Most High that He's keeping you, that He's blessing you, that you don't need to um, keep indulging in, in whatever it is you're struggling with or sin or whatever, because you know that your love for the Most High is greater than your flesh. You have confidence that you're going to enter into His rest. That's what you do. You enter into His rest. Now, let's see. I think um, that's pretty much all the scriptures that we may go through. Um, It's just, we just have to have all our confidence in the Lord. It's so important. Don't trust in your riches, your savings. Just trust the Lord. Hebrews 13, chapter uh, 13, verse 5 and 6 tells us that, to keep our lives free from the love of money and be content with, with, with excuse me, well with, whatever we have. Because the Lord said, never will, I, never will I leave you nor forsake you, you know. And we don't want to be caught up by the snares of, of this life. You don't want to be caught up with the snares of this life. So you can go through Hebrews chapter 13, 5, and 6. And also um, Proverbs eleven twenty eight 28. That talks about the worldly possessions where some people are snared with filthy lucres. Nothing wrong with being prosperous. You work hard. You put in the efforts all your life. The Most High gave you the strength and ability to accomplish what you accomplish. Um, that's good. You know, I, I've written in my book, of course, the difference between uh, self, low self-esteem and high self-esteem and the medium ground in between that, you know, or what the Bible says about confidence. And hopefully I'll get that book published just still doing some editing, but yeah, it's it's that medium ground. You know, the Bible talks about self esteem. And that's that's a part of our confidence that uh we have to work on, you know, some people may struggle with that. You know, you, you, you you're not able to do anything effective for the Lord if you don't have a, a healthy amount of of self esteem. You know, you have to read scriptures or uh, a witness to someone. It takes a a certain amount of healthy self-esteem, you know, from the Lord, healthy. And so we talked about trusting in the Lord and not putting your confidence In man. Now, Proverbs 11, chapter 
11, verse 13, <clears throat> excuse me, Proverbs 11, uh, verse 13 says, A gossip betrays a confidence. But a trustworthy person keeps a secret. You know, this goes along with, you know, um, you know, being careful who you show yourself friendly to because the gift is stored in the heart. And, you know, you telling someone your business, you know, I don't care how long you knew them, you have to be very careful because uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And if you ever get the discernment that the person that you're telling, you you, you, you want to be able to share, everybody needs to share or have someone to explain or get some wisdom back in the multitude of counselors, their safety, the Bible says. But then when you feel like you're feeling uncomfortable, you don't need to share it with that person. Perhaps the most high will have you to go to another brother or a sister, of course, um, in the gospel that you don't know, that you can feel comfortable, that you can get the wisdom that you need or just get it out. It's good to confess your faults one to another. Scripture says that, that you may be healed. But a gossip, a gossip betrays confidence. It does, you, don't feel, you don't feel confident about sharing to that person. You don't feel it. You don't feel it. So you shouldn't share. But a trustworthy person keeps your secret. And that goes a long way. Get away from gossip or anybody that gossips. You really need that. That is just damaging, very damaging to your spirit, your life, everything, your character, very, it's very damaging for you to be around people that gossip. Because there are people that do not take the word of the Lord that serious. They want to spread what they know because they want they want their lives to outshine yours or just talk about it. You don't need to talk about anything. You don't need to talk about anything. So you have to surround yourself with people the Lord put in your life or just be as you are to the most high to you, someone that is trustworthy. Because this is what he said in the scripture. But a faithful friend is trustworthy. We're talking about confidence. All your confidence. Who you need in your life. What you need in your life. All that comes from the most high. It goes hand in hand. Confidence. Confident that the Most High is going to see you, what you need, who you need, lead you and guide you in the right place. Confident. It's like the scripture says, let your eyes stay fixed and gazed. Your eyes have to be fixed and gazed upon the Lord. That's every day, all day throughout the day because you need to make decisions, don't you? You having a good time with your family? You laughing and talking and having a good time? Okay, well, you still need the Lord to be your confidence. So you can know where your heart needs to trust and not trust. And when is enough is enough. You need that confidence. You could be really blessed if you... Uh, Put your confidence in the Lord. The Lord knows what he's doing with our lives, even when things look like it's turned upside down. There's just things the Lord have to uh, fix. It's things the Lord have to bring recompense and reprimand and uh, chastisement and, you know, so he can bless, you know, and he can uh, restore and renew and save. Yes, all of that, all of that. So you have to have great confidence that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. You have to have great confidence in the Lord that he knows what he's doing with your life, even though it looks like chaos and hell. You have to trust in the Lord with all your heart. He will never leave you. Why would the God that loves you put you through something that's too much for you. He would never do that. 
If you're in it, like they said, if God leads you to it, he will bring you through it. It's a good little quote out there. If he leads you to it, he will bring you through it because he loves you. If you want to hear it. Patience. We also need patience in our heart. Patience reveal what the confidence in our in our what's it how what level that confidence in the Lord is. You gotta have that patience. See, that's why I love to talk about patience. The Bible said, "Let patience in your patience, let it possess your soul." Like you know, how much longer, Lord? How much longer, Lord? Okay, well, patience has to possess our soul to know and have the confidence in the Lord. Like Philippians 1, chapter 1, verse 6 says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ. Yahweh yes. Until the day of Christ, Yahweh Shai. Philippians 1 and 6. That's confidence that if you know the Most High has begun a good work in you, he's going to carry it through to the completion. Mm -hmm. Till the Lord comes back. It's never going to fail. The Lord will never fail you. Yes. So you have to have that confidence inside of you that the Most High knows what he's doing in your life, in my life, your life, your family life. And that he has given us the word for ourselves. It's what he came through the volume of the book. The people cleaving to the house of Jacob, of course, they take this word, they run with it. They need it in their lives too. You know, our whole heritage was stolen from us. And other nations, you know, got a hold to the word, and um, they're just eating this Bible up. They're eating this Bible up. And our nation, we have to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments and appreciate and love this word and live this word and just embrace this word for ourselves, that the Most High sent this word for us to encourage us and, 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 excuse me, encourage us and build us up because we are in the land of our captivity. We're in the land of our captivity. We have to be built up. You know, if a person um, have all of these privilege and this and that, you know, okay, well, I don't, I don't see the most high coming for them. No, he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He, he's only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, 1524. He's only sent to us. Why? Because we were the ones that are scattered. We're the ones that's oppressed. It's only us. Only us that need this word of great encouragement to build us up in the confidence of the Lord. Most High came for us. Matthew fifteen twenty four. We need the Most High more. His love, His treasure, His possession, His jewel, Judah, Israel, Mount Zion, our nation. That people want to destroy. This is our confidence that we have in him, the only source of hope on this earth, the only source of hope, the most high sent us, his people, the Hebrew Israelites, only source of hope we have is Jehovah, who's our power through Yahweh Shah. Christ, and they're trying to take that, take him from us, take the only word that we have. They want everything. Edom have left nothing. 
That's the book of Obadiah talks about. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And if you let him take the only source of hope and power from you, you don't have anything left, nothing. If you allow the world, the enemies, in this nation to take this word out of your heart, you got to fight. Because if you allow them to take this, you don't have nothing else left in your life. This word is your power because the Most High is his word. Yahweh is our power because we have his word abiding in us. That's quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. He's given us his word. That's why he said the clear thing and I establish it. Use your mouth. Speak to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Speak in the atmosphere. Declare your day. This word is our power. The word is all we have left that will fight for us. In this wicked world, in this wicked land, we can only be blind to so much in our nation. You know, our nation have to. We have to humble down to this word. We just have to humble down to this word. I want to go to one scripture before I get off the broadcast. I know it's a long broadcast. A lot of people. If they can't stay on, maybe you can come back. But there are some people that's going to need this word. And I pray the Lord bless you and keep you and strengthen you and lift his confidence up upon you to give you great confidence. You need it when you walk out your door. You need it while you're at the grocery store. You need it the way the enemy is turning up the heat in these heathens. You need it. We need it. Power. Power. Most times with you, angels all around you when you walk out. That's confidence in the Lord. Got angels with swords around you. The spirit recognize it. Scripture right here. Before I get off. Confidence. In your house, shy. Confidence in your house, shy. Your house is our power. Confidence that the Lord sent you. The Lord, the, the, the Lord, um, the Most High sent your house, shy, to be our confidence. He give us that propitiation so that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Proverbs three twenty six. For the Lord, <clears throat> let's read it. Let's turn there. I like the handle of my Bible. Proverbs 3.26. We're trying to wrap it on up. <clears throat> Try to take up all the time I can. We have a broadcast for 100. And... Proverbs 3.26. It's best to do that in as much time as you can, every chance you get, um, to bring forth the words since you have that time. So Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26, it says here, For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Because in life, we're going to first face many perils. He's with us. You're going to face many perils in life, many trials. But he is the one that's going to keep our foot from being taken because the Spirit is going to work for us in a mighty, mighty powerful way. 
You're going to always win with Christ. I'm going to just tell you right now, you're going to always win with Christ. It doesn't matter how it looks, what people are saying, how, you know, it just don't seem like it, how you don't feel it. You're going to always win. At the end of the day, at the end of your life, you're going to always win with the Most High. You're going to go through your trials. You're going to go through your tribulation. You're going to go through, you know, the things that the Most High wants us to go through to teach us lessons even until the day we die. But you will still always win. Because your hope is in him. Because he's teaching you how to pray. He's teaching you how to fight. As the scripture said, he teach my hands to war. Fight in prayer. Fight in the spirit. Fight flipping your pages through the Bible to find the scriptures and decree it out of your mouth. Speak the word of life. And 2 Corinthians 3 and 5 says, not that we think we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God. Our sufficiency is of God, not ourselves. We don't have no confidence in our flesh, but our power comes from the most high. Like Paul said, then we can make our boast all day long because we know where our help comes from. As Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to fear because perfect love casts out fear. And if you fear and your love have not been made perfect in the Lord, because fear has torment. So the person that fears, your love haven't been made perfect in the most high. You're not going to fear like that when you have the, 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 the love of Christ in you. Yeah. So I think we are down to the bottom of those scriptures that I wanted to go through. Um, um, Psalms 27, 1 and 3, of course. The Lord is the light. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And we know it continues to tell us when the enemy is when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart should not fear. Though war rise against me, this will I be confident. Yeah. Because we know the Lord. We're going to be confident in the Lord. To know that he's for us, he's with us, he is our battle axe, and never will he leave us nor forsake us. And this will we be confident. One thing about the desire of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. For in a time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of the tabernacle, of his tabernacle, shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. That's our God. And now shall my enemies be all around about me. So we want to just thank the most high for that word, ever abiding presence with us, giving us his word, strengthening us. Always upon his word, giving us what we need, the daily bread, our daily bread, because our confidence is in Yahweh, our power. Very important to have your confidence. May the Most High bless you, keep you, strengthen you, give you peace around you. With all the confidence and the love that you need, May he just bring victory in your life each and every day. Woo. May the word be that lamp unto your feet and the light to your path. And that he give you great peace. Great peace. So until the next time, may his face shine upon you, lift up his countenance upon you. And bless you and keep you in all your ways. This is Judah Praise signing off for today. Have a blessed day.